Hello, my name is Cancel TV, and today I'm going to talk to you about Fortress Design. Now, there's a lot of different opinions about how you can build your fort. All of them are correct. This is just the way that I personally like to do my fort, and in, the, in this detail, uh, in this video, I will detail why I like to do that. So, starting at the top, uh, this is where the wagon arrived, and we took a path using sonar straight down. Under the first cavern layer, this is all dug out for flux stone for steel. And as you can see, the first cavern layer is here. I've got the hospital, which sits above the cistern. Again, this is the path into the base here. Uh, and this is a river I've channeled into the base as well. So the path continues down. This is the area of the caverns that I managed to secure for my livestock and for my farms. Um, this is the barracks and the first cavern layer entrance here with a large atom smasher and a cage hallway. And then down here is the cistern. Now, as you can see, I have pulled the underground lake here. I've also pulled in a river through here. And I've got two channels to the edge of the map here and here. Which go through here. Now, this feeds the cistern. Uh, I can't have all the channels open at one time or it will flood the internal uh, lake if I have the river draining down into the lake. So um, can't, I can't have everything all at once. We have a controlled flow river right here, which empties down into the tavern for two waterfalls. And then this area is the very top of the fire breather, forgotten beast slash dragon slash whatever breathes fire that I, we're going to catch as well so this is the main stair uh, you can follow this staircase all the way up or all the way down to the bottom of the map without it impeding anything again i use sonar to do this all you have to do is google dwarf sonar and you can figure it out you just have to use farm plots very easily very easy and then this path right here leads to the water power for the magma pump stack so we go down a level. This is the water shotgun fill area. This is the flood the flood hallway that I use to kill enemies. This is where the water comes from for that, along with the underground lake that's above it. All the pressure from the river above that um, empties into the water shotgun room. And uh, this is the base foundation. So I like to implement efficiency into my bases. So I use city blocks, much like old city builders like Zeus and Poseidon. I've implemented my own idea of what I consider to be a dwarven city block into the game. So what I do is 31 tiles up, down, north, south, and 41 tiles east, west, left, right, so on and so forth. So if you want to know specifically, the space of tiles between each staircase from left to right is 41, right? And from north to south is 31, okay? Now, I use a series of five stairs uh, because I hear that nine stairs causes FPS issues. So just bear that in mind. If you're using bits, big sets of staircases, sometimes they can cause FPS problems. So I stick to five. And uh, again, this is the fire breathing area. So we'll go down a level. Now we're on the main floor. A few things to note. Our ramp has come directly down into a trade depot. The trade depot is linked with this mudstone bridge as you can see it's closed that's because the only time this opens up is when the trade the traders are here otherwise they are routed through this path right here and if it's a large monster that needs to be trapped with a webbed cage trap then we raise this lever or we raise this bridge and drop these two bridges here now this is our web slinging forgotten friend tuxu he has been providing webs for our cage trap so that we can catch mega beasts and things that are much too large for a cage trap. Thank you, Tuxu. We appreciate you. Currently, uh, building destroyers do not work, so you can use forbidden doors and trap doors to trap forgotten beasts. Now, I do expect eventually this will be patched out and building destroyers will once again destroy buildings, but for now, you can use barricaded doors, which are very simple. You just click on them and forbid them. I use a trap uh, sorry, I use a uh, uh, drawbridge raised to prevent him from slinging webs when enemies are coming through or when my dwarves are coming through and we leave it down when we need him to prime the traps for webs. And this is the central entryway right here. The entryway is linked 
to this large Atom Smasher here, which is called the Corner Smasher. My main staircase right here, this is where everybody traverses primarily through the main staircase here. I've decided to use the staircase as my actual lever room, which is actually quite good because up or down several Z levels, within 100 tiles, there are lots and lots of dwarves because of the way that I build my base. Um, the Corner Smasher takes care of most sieges of undead, goblins, humans, and elves. And we also have a fancy flood room right here, which we pull a lever and this drawbridge raises, this drawbridge raises, this drawbridge retracts, and this drawbridge bridge drops. And then up here, all this water rushes down into the hallway and then forces anything in this area to either die of drowning or be pushed down this gigantic pit which empties out into our tree farm area, and we'll come to that later. But for now, the main entrance then goes through this fire breather area. As you can see, we don't have a fire breather yet, but we're going to get one eventually. And uh, he will be right there. He will uh, we'll, we'll lower the drawbridge when we want him to fight, and we'll leave it raised when we want him to be docile. And then right in the entryway of the base here is our first barracks, filled with legendary dwarves, of course. Now on the main level, I've included a tavern, some guild halls, wood storage, and a manager area right on the main floor with our livestock right here. This is a barren area over here. And I don't know what this is going to be. I was actually looking for lignite and bituminous coal here, and I just kind of dug it out. Um, the uh, city block that I use, uh, it fits perfectly. 56 houses for dwarves. So the reason that I use this this city block specifically is because I can fit 56 houses within the boundaries of the block, including four tombs. So four tombs, 56 houses. I think it's pretty efficient. I don't have any dwarves bumping into each other. There's a large enough uh, place to walk through. So that's how I do my housing. And I make sure every dwarf gets a bed, a chest and a coffer, uh, sorry, a chest and a wardrobe or cabinet. And uh, I keep all my non-grazing animals here. So I've got, for this run in particular, I'm using pigs, peacocks. I also have some guinea hens and some other things in here. Uh, currently, I'm, I've am i just laid f like six clutches of eggs. So there's a shit ton of um, little pea chicks in here. I'm waiting for them to mature so that I can butcher them. And that's the main level. That's the main level there. So we're going to go down a level. And this is going to be all storage right here. Right next to all storage is going to be stone working, which has stone masons workshops, mechanic shops, and craft dwarf workshops. Now right here I have my cloth making. And I have several farmers workshops to process plants, several looms, several clothiers, and a few leather maker workshops and then i have separate stockpiles for each type of clothing so cloaks um hats gloves uh trousers uh, shirts so on and so forth uh, depending on what it is it goes into a different stockpile there and then we have our gem working area here and we have quite an abundance of gems uh at the moment because we're primarily selling uh prepared food and other goodies we've got some guild halls over here and again, the housing here. Now, this is, to me, peak Dwarven efficiency. Over several Z levels, they are never too far away from wherever they need to get with this base design. So down here, we have food making. We have our uh, screw press and our quern. Eventually, we'll get a powered millstone in here. Uh, but this is primarily where we do our luxury cooking. And I do like to give all of my dwarves their own custom dining area. It, te it seems to make them happier. Uh, and then this is where the housing kind of stopped. We don't need any more housing than this for now. Also, guys, I keep my Dwarven population at 135 below 140. Because if you go above 140, you get the king or queen. And if you get the king or queen, you have to take care of the 40 nobles that follow them around, the big babies. I don't like taking care of the nobles, so I keep it, above, uh, keep it below 140. Which actually also helps with FPS rate. So if you don't want a fort to die to FPS death... Keeping fewer dwarves is a good idea because dwarves doing relation checks and being in wide open areas doing checks is one of the leading causes of FPS lag in Dwarf Fortress right now. 
as per the forums. So just keep that in mind. If you're building big open areas with lots of dwarves, you're going to see a lot of lag. Coming down, we have the third level down, which we have some more guild halls. And this is the beginning of the metalworking storage on this floor. So we continue down one more floor and we see that we have metalworking. This is the metal workers workshop and the storage along with this floor here for the metal workers workshop. Eventually this will be dug out and this is the power for the magma pump stack that provides heat to the metal workers workshop. Now we also have magma glass furnaces and magma kilns in here and we're doing a lot of work with porcelain as we have an abundance of kalanite and porcelain is very valuable. So we go down a level and we can see the inner workings of the base. Now, this is not the main level. There will be no guild halls, no houses, no workshops, nothing below this point. This is now dig area. So what we've done here is I've got an area dug out. If we need to do anything on this level, we can. And I've kind of got the bare bones for what the base design looks like on this level, but I probably won't do much. And so you can see that what I've begun to do is dig out large swaths of earth so that I can get access to metalworking stuff and bituminous coal and lignite and all the things that you need. And my dwarves are working away nice and happy up here. So we go down a level and you see this big opening. Now this is the tree farm. We'll come to that. But again, the central stair here is right here. It continues down. And also I didn't mention this, but the magma pump stack is here with magma pump safe materials. For this particular stack, I did all iron, iron blocks, iron enormous pipes and enormous iron screws um, to build that. And it was, I believe, 27 levels deep, which is pretty good considering the last one I did was 70. So we move down a level and again, the central stair and the pump stack are right here. They will go all the way down. I didn't mention this, but the um, power on the river, uh, the river power rather that provides the magma pump stack with its uh, functionality. I can actually divert that by levers to drain down into this tree farm right here. Now this tree farm I planted exactly one year ago. So we're getting ready to see our first trees grow. I'm very excited about it. It's five tiles deep. I don't know if it's five tiles is ideal. This is the first uh, tree farm I've done, but I am excited at the prospect of being able to farm trees without sending my dwarves into dangerous areas. Dangerous areas, i.e. the surface or any cavern layer. Uh, as you can see, we have massive stone piles here where we had to move all the stones out of this area so that we could get proper saplings to grow. And so we've got this huge stockpile here that actually has forbidden everything. So I don't, I don't want this to be here. I hope that they take from this and eventually empty it out. And obviously you can see the pump stack still goes and the main stair, the main stair still goes and down and the drain area for the flood room is right here as well. So we continue down and we have the second cavern layer. And right here we have an entrance for the second cavern layer and a very simple squad of five dwarves that are training here to guard this entrance. We also continuing to move down. We have a pit area. Now, this is the area where I do advanced taming. As you can see, I've got some stray Rutherers and they're completely tame. So I got four adult Rutherers that were completely wild. I trained them, I bred them, and when the babies came out, I trained them again and that made them wild. Sorry, that made them tame. And then I killed the parents that were wild and now I have a line of completely tame Rutherers, which is great because these guys, when they're adults, are upwards of three tons. I also have some Paragoon Falcons, which I thought would be super cool to breed. And there actually is a clutch of eggs here that we're, we're working on diligently. So this is the pit area that empties into the third layer of the caverns. As you can see, we've been stripping some amphibian men that have been coming in the first layer and throwing them down. And you can see here that the third layer cavern squad is right here with a line of cage traps to stop anything from getting in. They're the, they're the main line of defense for this layer. I've also created iron floors, though I will upgrade them to silver or lead at some point because the heavier the floor, the more damage the fall does. 
And then we continue down. This is the breach point for the magma pump stack. And as you can see here, I used the diagonal upward uh, cheese exploit where you can have a you can have a dwarf dig through a drawbridge that you've built on the floor above. He will come stand if there's no path into this area. The dwarf will come down to the floor below, dig diagonally upward, even though there's a drawbridge in the way. So there's actually a hole right here and an iron drawbridge, and I was able to breach this without losing a single dwarf. It's 100% safe magma breach. Very useful information. So as we continue down, we're coming to the bottom now, and this is going to be where we end up breaching the circus. Right here, we had to dig into the side wall so that we could make this magma abundant and infinite. And then right here, this is the floor that we're going to build large hallways and spike traps so that when we fight the demons of hell, aka the circus, uh, we will be in a good position. So that will be the next phase of this base. But for now, this is Relic Boot from start to finish. If you guys have any questions, please ask in the comments. I am pleased to show you this as it is a feat of architecture that I'm very pleased with. So yeah, if you want to catch me live, I stream 60 hours a week. Yes, that's right. 60 hours a week on Twitch at twitch.com backslash cancei TV. That's cancel TV, but you capitalize the I so it looks like a lowercase L and it's a little cheat that I do. So cancei TV, catch me live, man. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching.